Yeah. All right guys, David at Humble Trekker Channel, how you doing out there? There's two unglamorous pieces of kit, which in my mind are the most important pieces of kit for enjoying the great outdoors for an extended period of time. Number one is your boots. Your ability to get from A to B, keeping your feet intact is number one. First of all, for uh, just enjoying the great outdoors as, uh, as a pastime, but number two, any type of emergency situation, survival situation, shit at the fan situation, you've got to look after your feet. So from getting the A to B, you need a decent pair of boots. Don't scrimp, don't save too much on your boots. If you've got a limited budget, make sure you put a large portion of that to a decent pair of boots. Number two, once you've gone from A to B, you've got your good quality boots that have taken you there, you want to be able to rest, recuperate, and recover at that location. And for that, you need a good night's sleep. And for a good night's sleep, you need a good sleeping bag. A sleeping bag has got one primary purpose, and that's to keep you warm, to enable you to have a good night's sleep. A good night's sleep is extremely important in the outdoor situation. If you're doing strenuous activities, you need to sleep to be able to recover. If you're in a tense uh, situation, an emergency survival situation, you need to be able to sleep to rest the mind, to rest the body, to recover any uh, problems you've got within your physical person or even your mental person. Sleep is also a replacement for food. So if you're in a low calorie uh, situation, you're not getting the correct amount of calories, actually sleeping can replace a meal to some extent. So if you look at the, the first series of Alone, Alan Kay who won that, he basically slept his way all the way through, the, I think it was the 50 or 60 days he was there and he admitted it himself. If he hadn't had a decent sleeping bag, he would not been able to sleep his way through that and win a million dollars. Now, warmth comes in different categories and the sleeping bag industry has rates their sleeping bags in the season system. There's five, generally speaking, season bags. A one season bag or a single season bag is a summer bag. That's the coolest bag you can purchase. Then you've got two, three, these become progressively warmer more insulation until you get a four season bag, which will take you down to quite uh, low negative temp temperatures. And then you've got five, the five season bag, which is actually a very specialized piece of kit. In my mind, that's for Arctic exploration, extreme conditions. The most useful bag, the first bag you want to purchase, if you live in temperate conditions, if you live in the type of environment that I do, obviously, if you live in completely Arctic conditions, or if you live in a desert, this discussion is not going to be for you. My advice is not going to be for you. This is for people that live in Northern Europe, Northern North America, or the equivalent in the Southern Hemisphere. So you have, generally speaking, temperate conditions, uh, quite nice in the summer, but in the winter, you get freezing conditions. The big, most useful bag you can purchase is a one season bag. After that, you need the fourth season bag. For me, season two and season three bags are intermediate trees they're halfway houses between the not lightness the compactness of a one season bag and the warmth of a four season bag and i not do not see a great deal of use for them and i'll get into exactly why during the video a one season bag an example of which i've got here which is a snug pack special forces this has got a comfort temperature of five plus degrees centigrade and an extreme or as they say a low temperature of exactly zero freezing point what does this mean you'll see this when you're looking at sleeping bags what's the difference between comfort and extreme come and there is no one definition for this and it's also entirely personal to you to the person sleeping in a bag S some people are comfortable sleeping with very little on top of them other people need a lot of warmth to be comfortable. So these are only guidelines when you see comfort and extreme ratings on your sleeping bag. But basically what it means is that up down to five degrees, you can sleep in that bag, sleep in this bag with, if it's well above five, no clothing on whatsoever. As you get down towards five, maybe you need to layer up with uh, some underwear, some woolen underwear or some fleece underwear, something like that. And then to go down to zero, what zero means is the manufacturer is basically telling you that in an emergency situation, you could sit in that bag uh, or lay in that bag with not a large amount of clothing, just a general, maybe sort of clothing I've got on now, just jeans and a sweatshirt, something like that, and you will not get hypothermia. 
Of course, that's not a legal term. They, he's not protected against that. But that's basically what he's telling you. You could survive the night. You're not going to be very comfortable, but that temperature will not kill you. Any temperature down to zero, I'm happy using my single season bag. And in this case, I'm ha very happy recommending the Snug Forces Special Force One bag. Uh, because what I do is that if it's a warm, if it's a warm night, you know I have less clo left clothing on. As it gets down to zero, then I just start to layer up my clothing, which means I can carry a very lightweight bag, which is um, compactable to a very small size, so it doesn't take a lot of space up in my bag, but I can stay warm. Another thing you can do is if you're using a summer bag and you're getting down to the extreme lows of where you're going to be comfortable in it, you can start to use a sleeping bag liner, either a cotton liner, a fleece liner, or even a silk liner. And then you put that inside this bag and then that will add a few degrees of comfort to the bag. The problem when you go to a two season bag or a three season bag, for start off you've got to purchase a lot more money, you've got to purchase a lot more bags that's going to cost you a lot more money. And they start to have smaller and smaller areas of usefulness. Because you sleep in the bag but you also have to carry your bag around. So you want to have a small compact bag as much as possible. As you buy a two season bag or a three season bag, yes, it will add some comfort when it gets colder, but it's going to be larger and heavier for you to carry. So from my mind, it's better to have a single season bag, and then as it gets down to its extremes of its comfort level, then you start to layer on with number one, the best layering you can have is merino wool underwear. If you really get down and you're starting to get cold in it, then you add it in a, a cotton or a fleece or a silk bag liner. That's how I make my choice of sleeping bags. I use a single season bag, a summer bag, throughout the year, as long as the temperature is gonna be above freezing. And I just take additional underwear or bag liner, which I find is more convenient and certainly cheaper than buying two or three season bags. And then when I know the weather's gonna be below, below freezing, below zero degrees centigrade, then I go straight to my fourth four season bag. And my four season bag is a Corinthia Defence 4. This bag has got a comfort temperature down to 15 degrees centigrade and it's got an extreme uh, level of minus 35 degrees centigrade. Now this is a good balance of practicality and also managing your budget. If you're in a situation where you're actually going to get down below 15 degrees centigrade and I've slept in this one down to minus 20 my fourth season bag just with this bag on its own. But this, there are options, rather than just going straight to a five season bag, if you've got a four season bag, and you've got your summer bag, and say you wanna go camping, you wanna go sleeping, and you're gonna get really, really cold, below minus 15 degrees centigrade, below minus 20, then what you do is you place your, you sleep inside your summer bag, inside your winter bag, your fourth season bag, and then you're gonna to be toasty, and I want to say, Obviously, this is a personal decision and you have to test it for yourself, but you're probably going to be okay down to minus 40 degrees centigrade with your summer bag inside your winter bag. Now, you can just take two different manufacturers' bags, like I've got here. This is a Snug Pack summer bag. You could easily put that inside this uh, Carinthia winter bag. But manufacturers also do sleep systems. So I've got a Corinthia summer bag, which is specific, specifically designed to fit inside the Corinthia winter bag. So it's a little bit more comfortable, it's a little bit easier to do, but you don't have to buy exactly the same manufacturer's bags to keep you warm. So why do I stubbornly use a summer bag for as long as I can? From the, as soon as it goes above freezing in the spring to as late as I can in the autumn when it goes below freezing. Very simple because this is a stuff sack for the Corinthia winter bag. That's the size of it. This is the stuff sack for the my summer bag from Snug Pack. It's much smaller and it's also much lighter. The Snug Pack is 1.2 kilos. The Corinthia is actually very light for the insulation it gives you, but it's still two kilos. Let's talk about care and maintenance of your bags. Guys, whatever you do, do not keep your bags in the stuff sacks. Sleeping bags have to be relaxed. They should never be 
it's stored for a long amount of time in their stuff sacks because you can press the insulation and they become less warm for you. This is another reason, going back to my earlier point where I think you should really concentrate your, some of your budget into your sleeping bags is, it's one area where I, I'm very strongly against buying second hand, very strongly against buying especially military surplus sleeping bags if you need it for cold conditions. If you're buying a military surplus bag for the summer usage, I haven't really got a problem with that because you don't need to have the absolute ultimate potential of uh, insulation it's going to give you. For example, I've got my Corinthia summer bag is a military surplus. I'm not dependent on this to keep me super toasty warm at very low temperatures, so I don't mind if it's lost some of its insulation qualities. But for bags that I want to keep me warm in uh, when I really need to be kept warm, for them I'm going to go the extra mile and buy them new. And then once you've purchased it, you'll get it in the stuff sack, but as soon as you get it, take it out, throw it in the wardrobe, hang it up, just put it somewhere where it's not compressed, because compressing it is gonna take away the insulation properties of your bag. It's basically like uh, getting a knife and dulling it. And you do not wanna dull your knife and you don't wanna make your bags less efficient. Now having said that, uh, people, some people like to put their sleeping bags into the stuff sacks when they're, when they're walking with them, when they're hiking with them, when they've got them packed down in their bags. I've not really got a problem with that. I don't think that's a major issue if it's just for a short amount of time. Uh, I personally don't do that because I don't think that's the best way of storing a sleeping bag in your rucksack. I think that gives you like a hard ball, like a football, that is difficult to pack around. I just put my sleeping bags in loose and then pack everything in around it. But when I do want to put my bag in the stuff sack, it does have to happen sometimes, when you buy a sleeping bag, you'll get it from the factory and it'll be tightly rolled up like a ball and they've got it in there really amazingly folded in there. When you're doing that, don't do that. These are called stuff sacks for a reason. You do not try and fold it up, you just stuff it straight in there. So you just grab, get the end of your feet going, push that in first so the air comes out. You don't bother trying to roll it up, do anything neat with it. You just stuff it in, literally stuffing it in the stuff sack. That's the best way, best way of packing it in there. This shows dramatically why I try and use a summer bag for as long as I can. Look at the difference in size. Now, if you put a two and a three season bag here, they get progressively larger until you get here. But the two and three season bags, they're, like I said, the intermediary decisions. Use a summer bag for as long as you can. When you really need the comfort, bring out your winter bag. Now, I didn't really make it clear when I said, I don't bother with, or I don't like to purchase, or I don't think it's a good idea to purchase second hand or military surplus bags <laughs> for two reasons. They've potentially been kept in compression sacks like this in warehouses in storage for year after year after year. That means they would have lost a considerable amount of the insulation properties. Secondly, they've also been washed at least once, maybe multiple times. <laughs> and washing your sleeping bag is also another way of destroying its insulation properties. So try and keep your bag as clean as possible. You can do that by wearing underwear or a liner and don't wash it unless it's absolutely necessary. If it's getting a bit stinky, put it in the freezer or leave it outside on a freezing night. Let's get down to a few of the finer points of detailed features of different types of sleeping bag. Of course, you wanna get yourself a mummy bag. You don't wanna get the thing you used to go and sleep over with your friends with back when you were as a kid, which is just a square off there. Mummy bag, of course, I'm sure everybody knows this. This means where you get a hood, so you can wrap it right over your hood. You've got a drawstring, so you can just have your eyes poking out, the minimal amount of uh, face poking out of that to keep you as warm as possible. And if you're too warm, you just undo it. But if you haven't got a mummy bag, you don't have the option of wrapping around your head, you don't keep your head warm. Another thing, which I'm gonna tell you about, guys, which is absolutely revolutionized, revolutionized, revolutionized? You know what I mean. It changed the way I felt about sleeping bags. And that's when I went from a side zip bag to a center zip bag. I used side zip bags for years and years and years. And then I got into uh, hammock camping. And I had a hell of a lot of trouble getting in and out of that side zip bag. So I said, I'm gonna get myself a center zip bag. 
And believe me guys, the center zip is the way to go. All I mean by that is, when you lay inside the bag, I'm gonna cover it on my microphone. When you lay inside the bag, the zip is straight down your chest like this. So you can, you can open it up like a book like that. You just lay inside it, you bring it around you, and then you zip it up like this. Side zip bags, I think the majority of bags are side zip bags. And what I mean by side zip bag is the zip comes up the side here. The negatives of this is you've got less comfort for getting in. Your feet are always constrained you get in there. You can only come in one side and you can have to close it. You have to lean across, pull it back like that, and then somehow with your right arm or your left arm, get the zip up, which is awkward. Center zip bags, they're much easier to get into. They work much, much better. I mean, 90,000% better in a hammock. And the zip being in the middle is just so much easier to use. Another thing to think about is the size of your bag. Now, it's very easy to see manufacturers and stores where they will print the length of the bag and you normally get a regular length for an extra long bag. But the length of the bag is not your, in my experience and opinion, it's not the main criteria or the main thing that's gonna make you comfortable in the bag. What you've got to think about when choosing your bag size is the dimension here across your shoulders. If that bag is too narrow, you'll be constricted and your shoulders will come around like this. You won't be able to move your shoulders and backwards and forwards. And this is all to do, this is what's gonna give you the comfort when you sleep. You've gotta be able to stretch out your chest. You cannot have a constricted chest when you're sleeping. It'll be okay, you get in there, you're nice. You first get in there, you creep down like this. You're nice and warm. But in an hour or two, you'll wake up in the morning and you'll be like, you slept like this all night, you've been constrained. And you will not have a good night's sleep. You've got to have a nice sleeping bag, which is broad enough for whatever size of chest you've got, which enables you to stretch out your rib cage, breathe deeply, and not be sleeping like this, like you're constrained. Right, that's it guys, that's the A to the Z of sleeping bags. Let's go over a few of the points I made there. If you want to do year-long camping, and where you live, it gets freezing in the winter, so below freezing point, you need two bags. You need a summer bag, a season one bag, and a four season bags. Use your season one bag for as long as you possibly can, then you get the benefits of lightness and small size when you're trekking. As it gets down to the limits of that bag, begin to layer up with underwear, add in a bag liner of different thicknesses, that way you're gonna have the best bang for your buck, and it will also keep, but it'll keep you comfortable, and it'll also be easily packable. When it gets down below freezing, break out your four season bag. That'll keep you nice and toasty warm. If you get down to extreme conditions, you take your season one bag, you sleep in that inside your four season bag, and that'll get you right down to real Baltic minus four Antarctic conditions. Season two, season three bags for me, not needed. Other things to remember about your bag, be wary about buying second hand and military surplus sleep systems, sleeping bags. If they've been compressed for a long amount of time, if they've been washed over and over, they will have lost their insulation properties. If you're only gonna use it on summer nights, that's not a problem. But if you're expecting that bag to keep you warm in extreme cold conditions, I would strongly advise against second-hand or military surplus bags. If you've not tried a center zip bag, try them out, that'll change your life. I'm never going back to a side zip bag. Don't keep your bags compressed. Don't wash your bags too often. Finally, when choosing your bag for comfort, don't just think about the size in terms of length, but also very important, how tight it is across the chest. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, little journey through my life's experiences with sleeping bags. Hope it's been useful to you. If you disagree with anything I say, please get down in the comments section. Tell me what you disagree with. Tell me what your opinion is of sleeping bags. Tell me what your ideal sleeping bag is. Uh, if you've got any questions about the bags I've got, uh, this hasn't been a specific review of any bag. This has just been a general discussion. That uh, Hopefully, if you're a guy who's looking out to try and buy a new sleeping bag, that's going to give you some things to think about. If you're a subscriber, thanks for being subscribed. Your sub is what keeps this channel going. That's the support that uh, benefits this, the channel the most. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time.